Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. This is your host, Emmett Muckles. This is the day that God gave you breath and he gave you vision and he gave you the ability to hear. So you better rejoice in that fact that you woke your butt up. You are a billionaire. You came to this planet as a billionaire. As a matter of fact, 30 days into it after mama and daddy's little cells met and they began their dance, you were a billion cells. So you're a human being. So it's time to Invest in that and live the life. Learn. Today, my guest is... I'm geeked up today. I'm just pumped. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Today, my guest is Mr. Josh Kelly. What's up, Mr. Josh Kelly? I'm not sure I could follow that intro, man. That was intense, man. I'm pumped up myself, man. You know, I get I get pumped, man. I just get hyped. And it, it's actually to a detriment because not everybody can take that energy. Hey man, if they can't if they can't buy into it, that's their problem, man. <laughs> you be you, yeah. I know a lot of people are like, "Hey, can you tone it down?" But I do understand that there are people who process information differently. You know, you just have to know your audience. But this is my show, so I'm gonna yeah, bring man. it. I am going to bring it. <laughs> now I now I gotta step up my energy level, man. I, I thought I was an excitable guy. Now I gotta compete with this. It's uh. <laughs> We got it though. We'll we'll figure this out. I'm not too worried. No, we are not in competition with anything because you do you, I do me, and we do we. There we go. There we go. That's the truth. So, uh, say the name of your company because I really don't want to manip- you know, mess it up because <laughs> it reads so, different than my brain processes it differently. Yeah, it's a uh, it's review kangaroo. A lot of people call it revenue kangaroo. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying it's like it's REVU. Where did you get revenue? Uh, but you know, people go crazy with it, man. But review kangaroo, you'd be surprised how difficult it is to get a URL that's not sat on. Yeah, that's true. We're reviewing it for like a hundred grand, man. We were uh, review kangaroo was like an accident name that we just started. What's rhyming with review? And like everything else on the list was sat on. We're like, uh, oh. okay, it's review kangaroo. <laughs> but I actually like it now. I love it now. So. And that's one of my businesses. I have a few others, but that's that's uh, the one I spend a lot of time on right now. Let's. So, if we put them on a list, you spend your most time on review kangaroo. What are the others? Yeah. So I have a. Uh, my family owns one of the largest home service businesses in the United States. Uh, we do plumbing and air conditioning. We did a little over a hundred million last year. I uh, have a marketing firm that's you know mid eight figures as well. Um, there's review kangaroo and I'm actually helping out a company called pulse, uh, which has got a $3 billion valuation. And I'm, I'm one of the high ups in that as well. All right. So this is a little bit different. You come from a family of people who were in business because you know, we're in a different economy. Uh, yeah. in 2000 and this is, I, I, I just put the death date on it in 2000, the industrial age took a death, took its deathbed. It died. It actually started it's before been that. It's dying for a long time. It's man. been dying a long time, but I just put the, the time of death at 2000. We're going to call okay. it bloop, time of death 2000, which means, you know, and the birth of the information age. And I put it around 1995 when high speed internet came into the fold and started birthing itself. But then a piggyback came on the information age, which is the service age. Mm-hmm. So now mm-hmm. we're in the information and service age. So what you know and what you can serve to others is the economy that is global. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize, like, they, you know, a lot of people across the country is in the United States, really, right? But, you know, they talk about, especially a little bit older people, you know, the heyday when we did manufacturing and made stuff. But they don't really, they don't realize how that happened, right? Yeah. Like, it's totally different. Like, the rest of the world was blown up. So it's not relevant anymore. <laughs> right. You know, and, and I'm. In that demographic, you know, I'm a, I'm an OG. Um, hey, I'm a Nothing big, I'm what they call in my neighborhood, a big homie. <laughs> but 
that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about this. What made you promote, come up with, what was the aha moment when you said review kangaroo is going to be a thing? Honestly, like a lot of people think now we've had a lot of success and they're like, how'd you come up with ideas? And it's like, uh, you know, how long did it take, how to put together. And the truth is it was kind of accidental. Uh, I have one of the largest home service business in the world, plumbing and air conditioning. You think it's hard to get reviews for a restaurant, for, for something that people actually like. Imagine plumbing, man. Yeah. No one wakes up in the morning and says, you know, it'd be great today. Shiny pipes. <laughs> You know, it doesn't exist. So you walk into houses where people are upset and you've done, you haven't even talked to them yet. Like, it's just part of the process, right? Um, and the thing is, you could do an amazing job and it's still a bad situation. So it's hard to get good reviews. Yeah. And when you made any kind of mistake, it was, it was exponentially worse because they already hated the situation. So I had to figure out a system for my own business. Um, and review kangaroo is the truth is I tried to buy it. I tried to hire people for it and no one really had it figured out. So I had to figure it out for my own business. And as we're building about halfway through, I'm like, Oh my God, this is a great idea. Yeah. We could probably make a really good business out of this. Right. But it wasn't intentional by any means, but you know, sometimes that's how things work. But, and that's one of those things that I always kind of promote on this program is there's something in your life. What's your problem? What problem are you having or what problem that your friends having or somebody close to you having? Because when you solve that problem, you're solving it, not just for yourself, you're solving it for quite a few other people. And with the billions of people on this planet, all you need is a few hundred or a few thousand and you're sustainable. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that happens a lot, right? You solve an issue and there's a business there. Anytime you solve a problem, there's a, there's a potential business there. Um, a lot of times you don't go in with that mindset though. And I didn't go in with that mindset. I was just trying to help promote our own business. Like our own business, the plumbing business go 20 million one year after we launched review King group. Wow. That's, that's a lot of freaking money, man. Uh, that's what I was trying to do. And then review kangaroo started taking off too. Cause I just started talking to other people about it and they saw us doing stuff and they saw Parker and Sons reviews jump from a couple hundred to a few thousand in like six months. Um, and all five stars and all of a sudden everybody's beating on my door and we right. started, started making a business out of it. And we've been running ever since really. Hey, do you know anybody in Indiana? I need a sump pump. I do know people in Indiana, man. I could set you up for sure. Please set me up because I'm sorry, people. I'm about to blow some people out. <laughs> These people don't, right, they don't hustle like Detroit people hustle or like city people hustle. This is true, man. I'm originally from Cincinnati. I get it, man. I mean, I like, I, I literally put it out. I need a garage. Yeah, I'll get to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I know people like that. But you know what? In every city, there's people like that, and there's the hustlers, too, man. It, it all depends. Everybody's different. I love people who are just coming after it, people who are opportunists, because there's opportunities everywhere. So with this, I know we're digressing because I know what you've been through today and you know what I'm going through. But when you look at everything and why is it that your specific niche could not benefit from the things that are out there? Because, you know, a lot of times I used to travel a lot, I still travel a lot. And when I want to find a, a nice place, first place I would go would be like something like Yelp. Mm hmm. Or mm-hmm. um, TripAdvisor or something like that, just to find out, hey, they said this was cool. Hey, don't go here. They have dogs, um, whatever. Why right. couldn't your industry benefit from something like that? So it's not that we don't benefit from Yelp or Google or Facebook or HomeAdvisor or TripAdvisor. And that's not really the issue, right? Um, the issue is Yelp is designed to work against businesses. That's the truth. Yeah. Um, so, like, if you're a solid business, it doesn't necessarily matter, right? So, the system is not to replace Yelp. It's to make you look good and actually your service, the a value and the quality of service you provide actually shows up on Yelp. Because it's so hard to get a positive Yelp review, which is not right. They take down positive reviews that are actual customers, right? They po- post up, like, I don't know how much you know about Yelp. I don't. Um, I'm actually I'm actually affiliated <laughs> with Yelp. I have direct integration. They don't like when I talk about it, but... Um, you know, I'm affiliated with Yelp, Google, Facebook, all the major platforms work with us directly. Um, 
it's it's a hard game to win. It's a hard game to win. So it's not like I was replacing Yelp. I was trying to make sure that when we did amazing service, I got credit for it. You're targeting. Yeah, it's not just targeting. It's 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 more complicated than that, obviously, right? But you know, a plumbing business is a perfect example, but it's a dentist is the same way. Yeah, you're right. A lawyer is the same way. Like like if you did a good if you did your job, that's that's what you're supposed to do. You don't get credit for that. Right. When you make a mistake, everybody hears about it, right? That is that is so true. Everybody, you know, there's so many things that and and we can get into this because this comes down to social proof. Right. Right. And, you know, I know from the conversations with you, you say there's three types of social proof. And how does that come into play with you? He's been listening to me, man. He's he's stalking me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So there's three types of social proof. You want me to break down three types of social proof? Break it down. Break it down. And and here's the thing. All three will drastically grow your business. All three, but in different ways. So the very first time is borrowed authority. So borrowed authority actually is what I use a lot to grow my business. And if you guys want to talk in detail about that, reach out to me, but we'll, we'll cover briefly, right? Borrowed authority is something as simple as a referral. It could be an endorsement. It could be winning awards. Like we got recognized by Congress. We blasted the crap out of that. That was amazing. We got the BBB Torch Award, right? Like this right here, this podcast yeah. is a form of borrowed authority, right? Right. Because if I was just screaming this on a street corner, Everyone would think I was crazy, right? But they know you're freaking amazing. They love you already, right? So they I love me so. by association. I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> they love me by association. I'm borrowing some of your authority and the love that you get every day. And it's rubbing off on me. And because of that, I have a platform that people listen to. So borrow authority is huge potential way to grow your business. Not, not like slight jumps. You could do huge bumps at a time, right? But it's hard to get consistently. Like you can't win an award that matters every week. It's hard to do. Um, Then there's really case studies or testimonials, which is really taking a referral from one to one to, you know, one to a hundred, one to a thousand. If you're really good, one to 10,000, right? Right. And really you're leveraging really happy customers to get more customers. And then the most, the most common, the easiest to get, the most consistent to get, if you know what you're doing is reviews, right? And plus they have the best placement. They're used every day. You could drastically grow your business by using reviews and you're taking that what was that one to one, you know, happy customer and turn them into one to a hundred thousand. Yeah. Sometimes one to a million, man. And you could literally do that. We have businesses that jumped on our program grow twenty, thirty percent in six months. Just because just because they're getting credit for what they already do. So who you who is your perfect customer for your service? Because everybody has a perfect customer in mind yeah. when they design it. Like initially you were your perfect customer, <laughs> but then you said, I mirror these type of structures. W- what are those? So what we found pretty quickly, I mean, we have a few personas or like perfect customers or what we define, right? We go after a few industries and we go after a lot actually, but a lot fall into our lap too. Right. Um, so really what well, we focus on service-based industries and when I say service-based, that doesn't necessarily mean like just home services like my background. It can also be lawyers, doctors, dentists, chiropractors, uh, accountants. Uh, what we're really looking for is someone with a face-to-face interaction. Yeah. Um, the reason that we do that is our system actually is employee-based. And uh, so essentially, is, this is weird to say, but if you were write a review on ABC Company, you actually write a review on Joe at ABC Company because you get way better results. They tend to skew more positively. I could drive out. They tend to story tell more. There's all kinds of benefits to making it a person. Um, but we, we look for those specific type of relationships because we could drive business a lot more. We don't really work with like an e-commerce site. We do on occasion, but like our average client grows 15% revenue for six months. That's our average. Wow. For e-commerce, it's like six or seven, which sounds really amazing. And they're really excited. But I know I can blow up a service-based business. An e-commerce business, I'm growing. I'd rather blow somebody up, right? And change their life permanently, right? So that's what we tend to focus on. So I know you're looking for like a specific, and we do have like, we, we actually have those one sheets where it's like Harry HVAC guy, right? And then we describe him and his age and all that fun stuff. But, but you have that on your site. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is, spell it. Your website. Oh, what do you mean? Spell your website. Oh, review R E V U K A N G A R O O dot com. Review kangaroo. I, I had to say that because 
even when you look at it, it's kind of like <laughs> it's like the first time I saw Chick Fil A, and I was like, "Hey, it's Chick Fil A." <laughs> I was, uh, I'm a. I'm going to give you the credit and just going to ignore that comment. Right I, I, was in, I was in South Carolina for my daughter's dance. You know, those things that they have. And I literally everybody was literally said the same thing. Like I said it and they knew exactly what I was talking about till we all got to the place and we're like, oh, it's chick Phil. A. <laughs> that's how yeah. it is. But that's actually good branding because it sticks in your mind. You know what you're looking for. For sure. For sure. And I mean, if you mistype and you spell out review kangaroo, you're still going to end up with us. So it's not the end of the world. Exactly. Uh, but, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it, that was, a uh, we, I, I actually like it now, but it was originally by necessity because the word review kangaroo, like the actual URL, someone was sitting on it for 50 grand. So we essentially flooded it where they couldn't use it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then took it over. That's awesome. That's so yeah. awesome. Now this business, it, it's made you grow a lot. It's made you understand what's happening. I mean, like we just talked, like you just came back from a conference where you were speaking for business owners. And what is it that you need to help business owners understand for your service? So, I mean, I speak for a lot of different things. because I, I, have a, I have kind of a weird background where I've done a lot of different things and grown a lot of really successful businesses and failed on businesses too. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not betting a thousand by any means. That's how um, it is. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but when I'm talking about my service specifically, the real issue is once you've seen it, it blows people's mind. It, it's an easy sell. Uh, everybody understands the value. Everybody understands how much revenue it's going to generate for them. It's an easy win. But the truth is, people don't really understand the value of reviews. Like they know it's important, but they don't know the monetary gains that come with it. Uh, simple stuff like hey if you want the best team members like the best employees if someone's looking for a job where do you think they look first i like, go glass they, door they look at your reviews on glass door right yeah and they're pretty honest about it too <laughs> yeah yeah it's all it's all related it's 100 percent related right uh, so that's part of it and then really i mean we're disrupting the whole the whole industry right we came up with a totally new model and totally new way of doing it. So they don't even know a service like ours exists. Oh. So not only do I, I have to educate people every time on like what we're actually talking about, because people talk to us, the reputation management, what does that mean? Like you, uh, you help remove negative reviews. I'm like, I mean, yeah, we do, but that's not really what we do. Right. We do so much more than that. Um, we add a ton of positive reviews for you. We're going to actually drive your business. We're going to have, have uh, help you ask for referrals, cross sell, make offers. Um, help your conversion rates, help your closing percentages, help you get better team members. Like, I mean, it's like a stack that's crazy. We, there's like 30 things we help businesses with, but all they think about is like, I just need that one review off of Yelp. I'm like, I mean, that's not going to, yeah, that'll help, but that's not going to drastically change your business, you know? And I'm in the business of drastically changing people's lives. Yeah. And you guys have a lot of information. Uh, you have archives on your blog post on your website, going back to 2015 and you know, you would think that it was just covering your business, but you also cover some of the other aspects of reviews as well, helping people to understand what's happening with those. You, and here's where I'm going with this question or with this setup is most people are singularly focused on their business only, but you're pulling in everything so that they can understand. Was that the mindset you had? You're like, look, I know these other things are out here. Instead of just focusing on mine, I'm going to show you the big picture. I mean, here, here's my theory about business and life in general, right? If you provide enough value to other people, it comes back to you. It does. I know if I could educate people and help them and change their business, and it has nothing to do with Review Kangaroo, but I could, I could teach them something that drastically helps them, I know eventually they're going to come back to me. It's just a matter of time because – because people work with people they like and trust, right? And that's a way to build like and trust. But beyond that, like, if you help someone, man, there's long-term effects to that. And there's there's a synergy that happens with that. Yeah. So even our blogs or if you hear me speak, I don't speak only about reviews. I don't speak only about my history. Like, I actually give actionable steps every time I speak, no matter what kind of conference I'm how many people I'm speaking to. Um, if you don't leave with things that you can make in your business that day, I've failed. Yeah. I failed, right? 
because I know if I provide that value and it's amazing, everything else will work itself out. It will. So that's my thought process. And that's just my kind of life process too, man. Now, what if you're a, a sole proprietor? You know, you're just doing a service, you're building your business. How can uh, Review Kangaroo help them? So it depends on their business, man. So I'm not going to be dishonest and say Review Kangaroo is a perfect fit for every business across the world because it's not. Right. Um, ultimately, it's a uh, it's a question of a few things, right? Number one, like I need you to have an active website and reviews matter to you, right? If you're a uh, you know construction company that works with the government only, reviews don't matter to you. <laughs> it's just the truth, right? I get it. There's yeah, nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm not going to sell you, right? It doesn't matter. If you're if you're a solo entre- <clears throat> sorry a solo entrepreneur and you have a social media agency and you got three clients, if I get you three reviews, is that going to drastically change your world? It's it's not. It just isn't right? right. So it depends what kind of business they're in. If you're a real estate agent, phew, reviews are really important. Yeah, I could help you with that. Yeah. If you're if you're a service provider, if you're an accountant. If you're a financial advisor, I can actually help you because there's all kinds of regulations against financial advisors asking. Oh, for, didn't think about that. You don't even think about. It. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a doctor, like all these, it just depends what you're doing. Um, so that's a blanket statement. Like, how can I help a solopreneur? No matter what, I could give you amazing information that you could act, uh, you know, execute today. And we'll definitely be doing that. But um you know, review kangaroo is not fit for but, everybody, and that's okay. But you know, that actually makes sense what you said. You know, somebody may come to you and you'll be honest and say, I can't help you. But then they may refer somebody and say, Hey, I think these guys would be perfect for you because you're a little yeah. bit bigger. Or, and, and that's the part of the, I get frustrated with this because people have this, we've come from this selfish mentality from the industrial age. And literally, it's about sharing now. Because it's karmic, it will come back to you. Yeah, and I keep tell, I keep saying to people, you know, when you, don't expect to get your fruit where you plant your seed. And they look at me like, "What are you talking about?" And I literally break it down to them and say, "All right, I'm gonna give you a seed, and I want you to plant this, and it's an apple tree. All right, and I want you to get your fruit from this tree." And they're like, "Okay, cool." And then they plant the seed and they sit there and look at the ground until one day. An apple hits them on the head and they look up and they go, oh, my fruit is not where I planted the seed. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, here's the real key, right? So there's people like I, I was talking to um, literally at this conference. We had a booth, right? And I spoke in front of a few thousand people and uh, people were rolling through, signing up and then just chatting with me after I spoke. And one of them was a, a commercial uh, construction company that worked. Uh, it wasn't governments, but it was it was something we weren't a good fit, right? We're good fit. He goes, but I want to start a residential side. And I'm like, perfect. That's awesome. When you're ready, we'll certainly help you then. He goes, I don't know how to start a residential side. And I spent five minutes with him talking about how to cross sell and how to start that business, right? Right. Now, do you think that person, once he's ready, is going to give me a call and work with me by then? Of course he is. Yep. Because I just drastically changed his life. Those five minutes, because of my background and my experience, probably saved him six months of headaches. Yeah. Wow. So why don't you just start a basic consulting service? You just be like the guru. Hi, this is Josh Kelly, the guru sitting on the mountain with my legs crossed and my meditation beats. <laughs> well, because my meditation beats are disgusting. I could, no, I'm stop it, dude. Stop, 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 yeah. stop, stop. stop. No, uh, no, honestly, it's, you know, I'm, I don't really, I don't like that word guru. Number one, I, anybody could be a guru. I don't think it actually means anything. I don't want to start a consulting business. I've I've done that. And if you're in the home service industry, like like I did that before and I could do great things. But I'm not an expert in business in general, man. I just I get lucky often. I, I, that's what Good. I feel like anyway. Right. Um, and I, I just my goal in life is to help people achieve things they couldn't do without me. Right. And I know for me to be able to scale and do that in a large scale, I have to have systems in place. I have to have a team in place. I have to have programs. That's why software is perfect, man. It's so exciting because I can help so many people every single day. And it's work I did six months ago. Are there any basic prerequisites yeah. or mindset that people need to understand when they start to use your service? Um, they have to be comfortable with asking for reviews. They have to be comfortable getting feedback with their uh, customers. 
they have to be comfortable comfortable dealing with when customers are upset because here's what happens, right? If I ask your customers by email, text message, social media, every single day how their service was, guess what? You're going to hear things that you didn't want to hear and you have never heard before. Yeah. The positive ones are really easy. Like, you know, they give themselves a high five and, uh, you know, they move on with the day. Yeah. But the uh, negative ones, a lot of people get upset with that, right? And like, that's part of the process too, right? That's hard to process. That, that humanly is is hard to take that rejection and that no. <laughs> Well, you got to think about it this way. There's companies that we work with that were actively asking for reviews, right? And before they started using us, they were getting, you know, five, five to 10 reviews a month. They started working with us. They got 400 reviews the first month. But guess what? Those 400, all the ones that go out to the third party sites are positive, beautiful, good. But we take capture the, the negative ones to come internal. They went from, you know, maybe one a month that was negative. Now they got 30 or 40. Now they're not going anywhere. No other potential customer sees them, right? Yeah. But you got to deal with this. It, it hits you hard. It's like, oh, my God, we have a bigger problem than I realized with it because because I was just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Now, I'm only I'm seeing more of the iceberg. I'm not seeing the whole thing. Right. But I'm seeing much more of it. And for some companies, that's a that's that's very difficult to deal with. So that's a big expectation we have to set up front. But that's really good information so that they can actually grow because, you know, you only see the world through your own eyes. And it's only sure. when somebody looks back at you and says, hey, you got something hanging from your nose that you know to get you a tissue. <laughs> so, I mean, the inf- so you're also providing value on how to increase their metrics as well from the negative reviews if they get enough of them. I mean, if they start getting seen in one area where they're getting consistent negative feedback, now they know they have some things to work on. Yeah, absolutely. And ours is team member based. So sometimes as bad as it sounds, it's not, you know, it could be procedural, it could be issues or, or it could be a person, you know, and sometimes people have trouble dealing with that too. But yeah, I mean, I think that way, uh, you think that way, a lot of people think that way, but not every entrepreneur thinks that way, you know? It's hard. It's hard. It it literally is hard when you hear that information, but you have to be mature and, and, Dude, you, that's like the best information you can have. It, like, it's not pleasant to hear that you're screwing up, but everybody screws up. I don't care who you are, right? And if you find a systematic way to remove that and never happens again, that's freaking empowering. Yeah. And that's a life change, man. That's That changes that customer's life because you made it right for them. Uh, you have a referral that you have never had before. Those are your best customers when you make it right, yep. for sure. I think anyway, right? And then solving issues like that. I talk to people all the time. I, I I say, are you a you know firefighter or fire prevention, right? Most people are firefighters. Every day they're just trying to put out fires, but they never build stuff. Yeah, they never build stuff, so it never so it never flames up, yeah. right? Their house is made out of paper, and they're wondering why you know they have to put out fires all day. Oh, that's awesome. um, so <laughs> so so that's what we help do, right? But you know, it's a mind shift for a lot of people, which is which is difficult for some. Yeah. So where do you see it in 18 months from now? What's, what's your future goals? Uh, for Review Kangaroo specifically? Yes. I mean, I'd love to get, I would say 18 months will probably be hopefully 10,000 clients. That would, be, that would be a solid goal. Um, we're definitely on track for that, but there's a lot of runway between here and there. <laughs> That's all right. You got you to gotta have a goal. Even if you fall short, you still get somewhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the, you know what? I, I mean, I'm sure if you've stalked me before, which apparently you have, you know, I think a little differently than goals than most. So I'm not like a big goal guy. I'm a, uh, I think a goal is like a ladder, right? Hey man, listen, let's stop this word stalk. We're, we're in a different era now. You can't use those words. <laughs> you stalked me, man. I, I man, saw you outside in the bushes. Man, man. <laughs> I man stalked you. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But I think of, I think of goals like a ladder, right? So I want to be able. I, I set goals that I can reach up and grab. That, that's and I just keep setting goals over and over. Quick, quick, quick wins. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's that's a big goal for me. Review Kangaroo, ten thousand clients. I want to help a lot of people. We're going to add additional systems to it. But that's that's a question I don't answer well compared to most. Some people like have that can answer. They know exactly what they do. I don't set five, ten year goals. Uh, the most I go is a year. And the reason I do that is just I, – so I, I, my, my father explains this really well, and, you know, he's a great businessman as well. Um, and, uh, you know, he says, uh, you know, if I wanted to lose 40 pounds, like I don't know how to lose 40 pounds. It's like an unconceivable amount of weight. Mm-hmm. But I know how to lose a pound by tomorrow. And then I do it again, and then I do it again, and then I do it again, right? 
So that's the way I think about goals, right? I, I want something tangible that I can wrap my head around how to get there and create action items against. So uh, 10,000 clients, I can wrap my head around that because we've already got the st- systems and steps in place right. to get there. What am I going to be doing five years from now? Dude, I don't know what I'm going to eat for lunch. Um, <laughs> so, you're, I like you. You're a real person. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. Like, I, I'm not. I don't. I mean, I'll go down to the kitchen. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's a lot of times that's what life is about. Just trying to figure out where you just trying to figure out today. Just yeah, not for sure. Just, Hey, what am I going to do today? And I know what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go look at my wife's rear brakes. <laughs> that sounds horribly exciting. Oh yeah. yeah. <sighs> it's raining. <laughs> anyway, just for, just for everyone to know, just to tease him a little bit. Uh, he couldn't do this podcast. Because he had wife chores, but then I, started, I did, I did. Then it started raining, so that's the only reason you get to hear me right now. <laughs> She's been uh, after me for a month. She's like, "When you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? Wait, stop." Yeah, yeah. and I'm and I'm frugal because I am not going to pay somebody to do it. I will not. Man, time value, time I, value. I yeah. will get my YouTube video out and my tools, <laughs> and I will get it done. Hey, man, I want to thank you so much for being on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. I appreciate you having me, man. It was fun. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know how we depart from you. Remember when you wake up, give thanks. When you lay down at night, give thanks for the day that just passed and have hopes and gratitudes for the day to come. When you get up and you go cleanse off the day before, you go into the shower. When you come out the shower, just stay like that for a while. After you get the water off, just be as you came to this planet and go look at yourself in the mirror because that is who you are. That is your native essence. Be comfortable with that because we put so much on the exterior that we cover up the real surface and the interior. You have to love yourself first, literally. You know, like when you're on the airplane, they say, take care of yourself first because you can't take care of anybody else. You have to love yourself. Look in your eye. Everything is fractal. Your eye is like stars and nebulae in the sky. As above, so below. What you think you can bring into reality. As above, so below. If you don't think you're a billionaire and you didn't like what I said at the beginning, I'm going to put it to you like this. If you look at your hand, just your hand, and you count the cells that are in that hand, there's at least a billion there. Multiply that out by the whole body and you are priceless. Till next time, love you all. Peace.